to start, we're going to look at the two tools that may be included in your kit, in your glass weld kit, for practicing and learning how to do windshield repair. This is a tool we call the center punch, and this is a ball bearing uh, style uh, bullseye maker. So we're going to now show you how to create a damage with both of these tools so that you can begin to practice and learn how to do windshield repair. So to start, we're going to show you how to use the ball bearing bullseye maker in order to create a practice damage. So just kind of stretch your fingers over the windshield, creating a little bit of tension and holding it right against the glass, and then just pull the ball bearing back and smack it against the glass. Usually it takes three or four tries before it actually creates damage. There we go. Next, we're going to show you how to use the spring-loaded bullseye making tool. We're just going to hold one end, the sharp end ideally, against the glass, hold it steady against the glass and fix it against the glass, and then grab the back side of it and pull it back and let it hit a couple times against the glass until it makes a damage. Typically this will make a more of a star break type damage or a combination break type damage. So the next step after we've made our damage is to analyze and determine what sort of break we have. So as you can see, we've already set up our mirror, which allows us to really get a good look at the type of repair that we need to perform. In this case, as you can see, this uh, repair has kind of a conal shape to it all the way around. So it's got sort of a bullseye effect. But in the center, we have a tremendous amount of crushed glass and legs running around. So this is what we would call a combination break, a break that is part bullseye and part star break, kind of combined all in one. So now we're going to look at a star break. And as you notice here, uh, the star break has legs radiating out from all different directions. And the center of the impact point is usually relatively small. There's usually not much space in the middle of the break itself. So this is a true star break. Now this particular break here is a combination break. It's fairly large, it's fairly open. Um, due to the fact that it does have so many small fissures in it, I'm going to opt for a slightly thinner viscosity resin, in this case a 2010 amber or an all-weather amber resin, which should help to hide some of this crushed glass and small fissures in the center of this impact point. If this break was more clean in the center, it would be a traditional bullseye, in which case I may opt for a 2020 warm weather uh, resin in that case to help uh, fill that break. Um, so that's the kind of the first thing we would look at. Now if I was doing one of these other breaks like this one down here which is the true star break that we just talked about, um, I, in all likelihood I would use a gray resin on that and a thin gray resin uh, as well in order to help fill all of those legs and hide them as best as we could. So our mirror is on and now we need to prep our break for the repair. So the first thing we're going to do is use our fixed tip probe and we're just going to find the center impact point where the rock actually contacted the glass and uh, we're just going to use a small amount of pressure and just kind of probe that area. Um, this has a slightly large impact point. I'll kind of outline the whole impact point here. Some, some breaks will have small impact points, some will have slightly larger ones. And we're just looking for basically just removing any loose glass that may impede the flow of resin. But again, we're not going to drill here. Uh, we're just simply removing any loose glass that may be present there. I can use a little brush to brush away that debris once we've done so. Uh, the next thing would be to pre-flex the brake and so we're going to use that same fixed tip probe, put your thumb kind of on the end of it, kind of choke up on it and just use light pressure and kind of work your way around the brake, pressuring uh, the, the brake kind of sort towards the impact point, uh, kind of radiating outwards and so there's several reasons why we do this. Um, the main reason is to open up any little fissures, make sure they're all connected so the resin can flow. It also helps us to see if there's any hidden legs that we're not aware of. Uh, also helps us to see how sensitive the brake might be to, to flexor, flexing and pressure. Uh, and we're, we're just applying just enough pressure just to kind of flex some of those legs as you can see right there. Um, and then uh, once we've done that, we're, we're ready to start our repair. Now that we've flexed and prepped the brake, again we're going to make sure that our tripod has a small amount of lubricant on each of the suction cups. Uh, you don't need much, but a small amount is needed in order to make an adjustment once we are on the glass. So we're just going to line the tripod up directly over the brake, and we want it to be in a Y shape rather than 
like this, right? And the reason being is that if you, for some reason, use an excessive amount of suction cup sealant, you wouldn't want it to drip in and contaminate the brake. So that's why we want to do it always in a Y shape on the brake. So just line it up, center it there, and then we're going to press each suction cup in individually. Um, and what we don't want to do here is to press it with our hand because that could lead to uh, one of the suction cups not being fully adhered to the glass. Okay, so now our stand is set up and it's time to load our injector with resin. So the first step is just to make sure that the piston is all the way threaded to the bottom. And we're going to remove the white seal from the injector and just place it to the side somewhere where it can stay clean and, and dry. And then if you see the tip here of the lower piston, we wanna back that up. So we've got about a quarter to half an inch of space or maybe a little bit more. So I'm just gonna turn the handle back about a full to maybe even a full and a, a turn and a half back to create some space for the resin within uh, that lower chamber. Um, so next we're going to choose the resin that we already chose early on when we identified the brake that we wanted to, to repair um, and what, what resin would be most appropriate. In that case it's the All Weather Amber or the 2010 Amber as some people know it and we're going to just drop the resin into the tip of the injector. So uh, being that this, this brake is a little bit large, for most brakes we're gonna use between four to six drops. So on this particular brake, I'm going to do six drops. Okay, very good. Now we wanna immediately put the cap back on the resin so that it doesn't start to cure, especially if you're working out in the sunlight and then drop your double-sided white seal back into the injector. Again, you can put it in in either direction. Make sure that seal is fully seated into the groove so it's not sticking out at all. And now the next step is to bring the resin up to the bottom surface or the inside surface of that seal. And so what I'm gonna to do to do that is to turn the injector clockwise um, and you're gonna see the resin gradually work its way up to the bottom of that seal. And this is important because if we don't do this, the resin will just come flowing out uh, once we start our repair. So right there, if you see the resin contact the bottom portion or the lower portion of that seal. And now if we turn the injector upside down, the resin will not flow out. It'll just stay in place at where it is. Okay, so now it's time to mount the injector into the stand. Two things we wanna check, just to make sure that our white seal is clean and dry, uh, that there's no resin or other debris on the surface. And we also wanna make sure that the ratchet teeth here, the Z-mount ratchet teeth, are lined up with the ratchet paw. Um, so now that those two are lined up, all we're gonna do is just grab it here from the backside, line it up, and push it in until it clicks. So now it's clicked and in, into position. Uh, we don't need to press it in from the top. We don't need to press it hard. We just want it to kind of click into place. Uh, now that it's about ready to touch the glass, now, uh, now I'm going to make an adjustment on my stand, on the tripod stand, to verify that it's directly over the impact point. So all we're gonna do is grab the stand and just kind of slide it down, looking in the mirror, to make sure that it's directly over that impact point, right about there. Now, uh, at this point, we're going to, going to go ahead and create the seal against the glass. And all we need to do is just click it in until we see the white seal contact the glass, which was right there. And now we need one to two clicks to create a pop, proper seal against the glass. So you'll see me do that. We're going to get one, and I'll press a little bit more and see if I get a second one. And if, if you feel like you've got to press hard to get the second seal, in all likelihood, it's not necessary. You don't need to overpressurize. Uh, the, the zoom against the glass. You just want to press it in until it contacts the glass until you get one to two clicks. Now we're going to briefly talk about how to use your corner edge extension. With the zoom injector you're going to set up your tripod. Let's say you got a break right up here in the corner and then you're just going to use your corner edge extension. It has some small teeth right here on the edge and you're just going to click it into place. Um, then you're going to give yourself a little bit of downward pressure by threading the the, uh, the screw here in, the leveling screw. So you got just kind of a slight downward angle with the uh, extension tool there. And then once your zoom is loaded up and ready to go, you're just going to uh, ratchet it into that area and get it to those one or two clicks once you hit the, the surface of the glass. Now we're gonna quickly show you how to mount your EcoVac injector if you don't have a zoom injector. So the EcoVac has got a threading mechanism here on the end and a threading mechanism here on the tripod stand. So you're just gonna simply line those up and thread it into place. 
Um, once it engages, then just thread it down until it's about to contact the glass. Once it does contact the glass, we just want to do just an eighth or a quarter of a turn, so just a slight turn, not very much at all, um, and that would will create a nice seal against the glass. Now the next thing to do is to drop this cam lock. This little cam lock needs to tighten down against the tripod stand in order to, keep, to prevent the EcoVac injector from spinning free when you go to pull your vacuum. So that's how to set it up in there. Now in the case of the corner edge or long crack extension, which is this device right here, it has two suction cups, which you'd want to lube up as well. And then you'd want to use your leveling screw to create a slight downward angle, and then just simply thread the EcoVac into the threading mechanism on the corner edge and long crack extension. Simple as that. So now we're, we've got a nice seal against the glass and we're ready to start our first vacuum cycle. Now this is sort of a, a preparatory initial cycle. Um, so we're just going to grab the body here and then just thread the piston all the way back until it stops. So now we've been here for about maybe 15 seconds and we're just going to now reverse that cycle by threading the piston back down. At this point what I'm looking for is the white seal and it's best to kind of get your head at an angle so you can see the white seal or look in the mirror and once you see the white seal kind of swell a little bit uh, that is an indication that the resin is flowing right there it kind of swelled up and so now we'll just stop and let the resin flow. Again we'll let this sit for about 15 to 30 seconds on the initial uh, prep injection cycle. Okay now we're going to go ahead and pull our second vacuum cycle and uh, we're going to just repeat the same steps just grab the body of the injector thread it all the way back until it stops and leave it there now at this point this vacuum cycle is the most crucial um, it was absolutely necessary that we get all of the air out of the brake at this point um, so in order to do so we're going to leave it for one to two minutes and we may even do a little bit of flexing while it's under vacuum in order to help uh, open up any of the legs around the perimeter and basically what we'll do is just briefly press some of the legs, kind of working our way around the brake, kind of pumping the brake so to speak, so that any trapped air, air may be able to work its way out. Okay, now we're going to complete the second vacuum cycle and the prime cycle, we might call it, the prime resin injection cycle. And we're just gonna thread this down once more until the seal swells up slightly again and that, that will indicate the resin is flowing right there the resin's flowing and you can kind of feel a little bit of resistance sometimes in the injector too to tell that the resin is indeed flowing and at this point we want to give it another one to two minutes as well so at this point we've completed our first two cycles both vacuum and resin and now the brake is pretty much completed but if we were to notice that you know some of the legs might be still visible from certain areas then there are a couple of techniques we can use to speed up the process of them filling. One is flexing and flexing just involves using your fixed tip probe kind of choking up on it and pressing and holding at the base of the leg that needs attention and you're just going to hold that pressure until the resin can fill into the end of that leg. Uh, the other technique uh, that we really recommend is using the included cork that comes with your glass weld kit and with that uh, we would recommend massaging the brake from the inside from the inside of the glass just for maybe 10 to 15 seconds with light pressure which helps to kind of pump the brake and allows the resin to flow in more quickly. So another common question that technicians when they're learning ask is how do I know if the legs are truly filled? Well the best way to do that is to focus your eye on each individual leg from one angle, kind of focus on it, and then move your head and 360 degrees around the brake while continuing to focus on that leg. If the leg is only visible or dark, you might say, or shiny from one angle, then in all likelihood that leg is filled. If it's visible from multiple positions, multiple head positions, if you're down here or over here or up here, you still see the leg, then that means that that leg still needs attention. So once you reach the point where all of the legs on the brake are visible from only one angle, then you know your repair is completely filled. It's also a good idea to, at this point, either remove the mirror or enter into the vehicle and analyze your repair from the inside. You sometimes may see something from the inside you don't see from the outside. So it's a good idea to go inside, remove the mirror, and check the brake before moving to the next step, which is curing. So now we've reached the point where it's time to begin the curing process. So we're, in this case, going to be using the ProCure Plus Light, 
and you'll notice that we have already connected the cord, we've already plugged it into our power source and the, and the vehicle's cigarette lighter. And on the inside of this curing light, we've got some grooves that will sit directly on the tripod legs. We've also got those angled lights that will reach the entire brake area and start to cure it while we're under resin pressure still. We're still injecting resin while we're gonna st start that curing process. So now we're just gonna simply install the curing light directly over the injector and stand. Press the suction cup in and make sure it's centered over there. And at this point, all I have to do is press this button and then this Procure Plus logo will begin to flash or pulse and it will continue to do so for approximately 60 seconds. Once that has stopped flashing, we'll know that our curing is complete. It's a good idea to place it to the side so we can use it during the pit fill process. If your system includes this small LED curing light that we call the cure light, uh, this is how you would use it. So after you've completed your repair, you would install it, press the suction cup in against the glass, angle it downward until it's angled at the tip of the injector, and then press the button and it will light up and you'll leave it in each position on each side of the tripod for approximately one minute. If your system uses the cure-all curing light, you would want to line it up uh, over the tripod on an angle as close as you can to the tripod, set it up, angle it in towards the brake, and leave it in each position for about one minute. Now at this point, we're going to remove the mirror and then the injector and move on to the pit fill process. So to remove the injector, we're just going to back off just slightly a little bit of the resin pressure, just a tiny little bit. And then we're going to press this release lever here and pull the injector straight out. We want to put the injector off to the side, making sure that the tip of the injector is not facing the sun. Now we'll go ahead and remove our, our tripod stand and we may want to remove any built up resin uh, goop on the surface before starting the pit fill process. Now we're going to start with the pit fill process. As you can see, we have a small piece of film tab here that has been cut up and the film tabs start in larger sheets, but you can cut them into smaller pieces in order to not use as much. Uh, we're going to take one drop of pit fill resin and drop it just above the impact point and kind of lay a, uh, a film tab directly over the surface, just like so. We don't want to press the film tab down with our thumb, we just want to lay it on the surface. Then center your light, whichever light you're using, directly over the pit filler. In the case of the Procure Plus, we're going to start the timer and let it complete its 60 second cycle. The film tab has a practical function in that it seals out any oxygen during the curing process, allowing the anaerobic resin to fully harden. Now that our cure is complete, the light has stopped pulsing, we'll remove the Procure Plus, and we will now take a razor blade or, or our finger and remove the film tab. Now we may be able to save this film tab and use it later. Next, we wanna take the razor blade and we're going to scrape off the excess pit filler here. It's important to do this at a 90 degree angle against the glass, not at a 45 or any other angle. And we're just going to begin by scraping the surface back and forth. We can do it from a variety of different angles with light downward pressure. Once the pit filler reaches the point where it's almost the size of the initial impact point, we want to go nice and slow and smooth so we don't scallop the edges. And now we've reached just that large impact point where the rock initially hit and damaged the windshield. Now that we have scraped that surface, we want to polish that initial pit that is filled with pit filler. And we're going to do that with one drop of pit polish. You can use the included glass weld cork or a, a normal paper towel will, will work just fine. So now that we've completed our first repair, let's just analyze briefly how you can clean your injector after each repair and at the end of each day. 
So the steps for cleaning between one repair to the next is really simple. Uh, the main thing is just to make sure that you don't have a, any buildup of resin in your ratchet teeth or if you're using the EcoVac in your threads. And then also in the tip uh, of the lower piston and where the lower chamber meet. Just kind of making sure you don't have a buildup of resin there. So wiping that out. And then the next, next thing would be to take your white seal and just kind of sponge it out or kind of pinch it between your fingers to make sure you've removed all the resin and debris from it so now it's clean and dry and we can continue on to the next repair. Now let's say that it's the end of the day and it's time to clean our injector. What are the steps that we're going to follow to make sure that our injector stays in tip-top condition uh, for a long period of time? So let's go into that. The first thing is just to break apart the injector and once again it is reverse threaded so just to remind you of that. Um, so we're going to remove the cap from the injector and once again we've got the upper seal and the lower seal so the first thing we'll do is just kind of wipe those off make sure that the the upper seal that we kind of clean in the top of it as well so there's not a buildup of seal lube or resin up around the top of that seal and then you know also wipe off the lower seal as well um, we can do the same thing with the upper chamber kind of wiping out that area and of course we can't easily access the lower chamber so what we're going to do with that because the lower chamber in particular comes in contact uh, with the resin is we're going to use denatured alcohol. You'll notice it does not come included with your kit. For shipping reasons we cannot ship it, uh, but you can find it in any, any hardware store. And we'll just spray a little bit of denatured alcohol on the lower piston and the lower seal and also into the lower chamber. Uh, and then we can use one of the pipe cleaner type, uh, type uh, apparatuses that come with your, your kit and you can just kind of clean out that lower chamber. That's the most crucial area because that's where you can get a buildup of resin kind of going at it from both angles and making sure we don't have a buildup of resin in there. And then in addition to that we can wipe this lower seal now off once more now that we've got all of the uh, denatured alcohol on there to help eat away at the resin. One last thing we can do to verify that our injector stays in good condition is to use the, uh, the wooden swab the, the wooden end of it to just kind of uh, check the edge of this lip here in the lower chamber uh, and, uh, and just verify that there's no resin built up on that edge which can happen over time. Though you never want to use a probe or anything metal in this area or really on anywhere in the injector. Uh, so if you're going to use something to break off some debris use a wooden toothpick or the backside of one of these wooden swabs. And uh, then at that point you can either install the injector back together or leave it separate overnight and you're ready to lube up your injector and start your repairs the following day.